Xavier Barcelou Duval questions the 80 plus versions of the Arrive Can app. What is the personal information that is collected by Arrive Can? How many citizens have been fined $5,000 for non compliance? What does the quarantine follow up look like? And the hounding phone calls being completed. Do you have those numbers? Here's the clip. Uh, Mr. Barcelou Duval. Next up, we have Mr. Barcelou Duval. You have six minutes. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My first question will be for Mr. Keenan. When it comes to the use of Arrive Can, I imagine there is data that is collected and used for different purposes. I think there's a number of 87% or 90% of people use it. Do you also collect data on the bugs and problems and the nature of these problems to understand whether these are fixed and how long it takes and the impact it has? Do you have information on that? Because it might be relevant that if this, such data exists, that it be transmitted to the committee. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, je, je donne la parole à la collègue de la Mr. Chair, I would like to hand it over to our CBSA colleague to answer this question. Oui, merci pour la question. Depuis le début. Thank you for the question. Since the introduction of the application, we've had about more than 80 versions to continue to improve the utility of the tool and to adjust to the health measures that also evolved um, based on different orders. So we will always make sure um, to do testing with Google and Apple to make sure that everything was in order, that the app was in proper shape, and it could be made available to passengers. And we have kept a database, if you will, uh, with information on elements that needed fixing in different versions uh, or along uh, the lines of different recommendations we received. Thank you. Just to confirm uh, the information you provided, Mr. Vinet, there have been more than 80 versions of the application which came in the aftermath of changes in government policy or bugs that were detected. Is it the case? Yes, it is the case. Would you be able to give me a number or different numbers, um, data that might be relevant, just to understand, OK, initially we had 1,000 bugs and then 500 bugs in August. Would you have like a, an idea on that? I don't have the data, unfortunately, to answer this question. But uh, most recently in the media, um, there was mention of 10,000 people or so using Apple phones, iPhones, who were impacted from um, for a, for a couple week period, and it took um, a couple of weeks to fix the situation. People were receiving emails to quarantine, so we detected these cases. We um, passed this information on to different colleagues, uh, and this was fixed. Okay. So we are hearing from citizens about fines going up to $5,000 if they do not follow the directive. Um, if it's a first offense, if it's the first time, this $5,000 fine will probably would probably not apply according to another directive. But uh, would you have an, an idea on the number of fines issued and the total monetary value? I would um, hand it over to our, my colleague, Ms. Lutfala, on the fines. But uh, we do collect the information coming through ArriveCAN. And it is uh, there is a 14-day quarantine. Um, we also have information that 80 to 90 percent of people uh, on a first trip, they actually make use of the application. Thank you. So in terms of uh, compliance with the arrive can and the potential monetary penalties that could be imposed on individuals, I just want to point out that our officers at the at the airports as well as land borders try to bring people into compliance rather than writing a ticket as the first measure. So we're, we're playing a much more facilitative role. A ticket is not the first option that is exercised by our officers to bring compliance with the ArriveCAN app. Since the inception or 
since ArriveCan was made mandatory for both land and air. And I think it was in 2020 for air and 2021 for land. Um, there's only been, I believe it's been 190 tickets with respect to ArriveCan non-compliance. In those cases, and they're very limited cases when you consider the overall number of travelers coming into our country, those individuals are, are individuals who are repeat offenders or simply will not comply with either giving us a paper submission, because we do offer that when they are referred over to back or they just don't want to comply with the public health measures. So I want to underscore that the ticket amount, the number of tickets that have been issued have been extremely low for arrive can on compliance because our officers play a very facilitative role. And generally they are very successful in bringing people back into compliance with the law. My next question will be for Mr. Vinette, but maybe someone else um, can answer as well. Um, so during the pandemic, when we had quarantines in place, um, there were a lot of questions and reaction against how quarantines were being followed and if there was any follow up, because in some situations that wasn't the case. So. I would like to know if the follow-up right now is effective and how it's being done. This would be a question for my colleague, Ms. Latvala. So there's a multi-pronged approach that's being used for quarantine follow-up. Uh, quarantine is generally applied for individuals who are unvaccinated or, or deemed unvaccinated because they were un, unable to provide us vaccine credentials. We at the public health agency, we have a, if you want to call it an escalation protocol, where we will start with phone calls. There will be uh, reminders that are sent through our RiveCan to remind individuals of their quarantine as well as their testing obligations. We also have um, callers who will contact these individuals directly to make sure that they maintain their compliance with their quarantine requirement. But also these individuals, these callers, uh, we'll call individuals who test positive to ensure that they meet the isolation requirements. Um, Thank you very much, of... uh, Ms. Litfala. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut you off there. Merci beaucoup. Mr. McDonald. Prochainement, nous avons Monsieur... Next up, we have Mr. Rousseau Duval. You have two and a half minutes. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My question will be for Ms. Litfala. Uh, because she wasn't finished when I uh, answering my previous question uh, about the quarantine follow-up. She was saying that notification can be sent through ArriveCan or uh, phone calls might be made, but are there physical checks as well to understand that people are, if people are following quarantine conditions? Yes, we do. We do on-site verification as well, based on the risk that the individual or the risk that uh, the individual may pose with respect to non-compliance um, in very, very limited circumstances. After we have an on-site verification, then that's usually done by, by a security company. Uh, we will refer some of those more egregious cases uh, to police of jurisdiction. Would it be possible to have an idea as to the numbers, uh, how many in-person physical checks have been done, done over the summer, for instance? Par au um, de gens à compared to the number of people in quarantine, what would be the percentage of people who have went through physical checks? I will have to um, get that number for you. I don't have it readily accessible. Okay, merci. Okay, thank you. If you could uh, provide the information later on, we would really appreciate. I might have a question for Mr. Keenan, I believe. Uh, we keep talking about arrive can. Does it work? Does it not work? Does it have bugs and fixes? Maybe it's efficient. Maybe it's not. When it comes to reducing wait times, we're still looking for evidence and data. Um, I would like to know what the government intends when it comes to keeping arrive can in the long term. Um, what's the direction? What's is there a clear direction? Will arrive can be still in place, however many months from now? Will it be stopped at some point? At, at some point? President, it's difficult. Mr. 
Mr. Chair, it would be hard to come up with a, a provision as to uh, what the government may decide in a sense. 